And so, with the arrival of our distinguished company, our chief guest, our keynote speaker, and the officers and council members of CMA Sri Lanka, we now proceed with our customary practice of inviting a few to participate in the lighting of the ceremonial oil lamp. So indeed, His Excellency David McKinnon, the High Commissioner for Canada in Sri Lanka, our chief guest, joined by Mr. Paul Thompson, our keynote speaker. President, Professor Lakshman Arvatavala, Vice President, Mr. Henna Kabandara, Dr. Harendra Karibasam, who is the exam committee chairman and a council member, also Mr. Manil Jayasinghe, another of the council members, CEO, DWS Narangoda, Mr. Sunil Peris, who is the course director for the CHFMA, and consultant, Mr. Kosala Visanayaka. So the lamp now suitably illumined, we shall follow with the next phase of our ceremonial inaugural, and that will be the national anthem of Sri Lanka, followed immediately thereafter by the anthem of CMA, of which there is an original work. So the CMA follows the national anthem. Oh. 
So we'd like to invite everyone to be comfortably seated. And this special event is probably properly recognized, properly and suitably recognized as the 20th anniversary graduation ceremony. And even as I say it, I'm reminded of an aphorism, a Latin phrase, Tempus fugit, time flies. And that's exactly the sense I have because it seems only the other day that CMA was set up, inaugurated, and allowed to flourish, and it has. Even as the lyric of the CMA anthem was able to underscore sustainable courses of study that, or that encourages a sustainable approach to management accounting and also the technological advance was also mentioned there. So it's not only about studying bookkeeping, but it is a great deal more that has encompassed uh, all of what has happened in these past 20 years and the development of the curricula as well. You're going to be hearing a lot more of the value of modernity as we go along. But at this juncture, it is my pleasure to invite for some introductory remarks and no doubt words of welcome as well, the chairman of the examinations committee of CMA Sri Lanka, Dr. Karyabasam. So please, pay him heed as he speaks. Good afternoon, chief guest, his Excellency David Mackinnon, keynote speaker, Mr. Paul Thompson, President of CMA, Professor Lashman R. Watavala, members of the Governing Council, CEO and staff members, certificate recipients, parents, well-wishers, and ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure as the director examinations of the CMA Sri Lanka to welcome all of you to the graduation ceremony 2019. As you all know, CMA Sri Lanka is the 
National Professional Management Accounting Body in Sri Lanka established under the Parliament Act and we always focus on producing qualified, innovative management accountants to cater the private and public sector in the national and global level. In the year 2019, we celebrate 20th anniversary for CMA. We are proud to say that CMA Sri Lanka has been well recognized by the government of Sri Lanka by listing the institute under the Ministry of Finance as the facilitating and coordinating agency on behalf of the government. Our chief guest, Canadian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka, His Excellency David Mackinnon. Dear sir, your presence is an honor for us. The keynote speaker, director of EFAA, Mr. Paul Thompson. We are looking forward to listen to an interesting and fruitful speech from you. Further, I would like to express my gratitude to both of you for grace in this occasion. Once again, I would like to welcome all of you to this prestigious event. Before winding up my speech, I would like to quote Blaise Pascal, a renowned French mathematician. Man is neither angel nor beast. And unhappily, whoever wants to act the angel acts the beast. You determine not to be a beast, but to become an angel. Dear audience, you may reach for the stars, but have your feet firmly planted on the ground. Finally, I would like to congratulate on your success at the CMA examinations, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you too, Dr. Karivasam. And that allows us to move on to inviting to this lectern the president of CMA Sri Lanka. And uh, of course, he's not a stranger. He has uh, been involved with setting up two professional accounting bodies in this country, AAT being one, and of course, the Institute of Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka, as well as having contributed vitally to the interests of professional training and also the profession of accounting. He is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka, a fellow member of the Institute of Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka, a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants of the UK, and the Chartered Global Management Accountant, so CGMA. And of course, in recognition of all of what he has contributed over these many years, he was recently accorded the titular honor by the president of Sri Lanka and is now Sikamani. That's the titular honor conferred upon Professor Lakshman R. Watavala. And also, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka some time back in 2013. And he's a past president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka, the South Asian Federation of Accountants, known by the acronym SAFA, also the Organization of Professional Associations of Lanka, of Sri Lanka, the OPA, and a founder president of AAT, as I've already mentioned, and CMA, the, this particular institution. And also he has contributed to industry, commerce, and trade, and has held many prestigious positions. But right now we'll invite him to address the audience. Professor Watavala, please. Thank you, Arun, for that uh, introduction. I think you were also there at the introduction at the time when we started 20 years back. I'm sure you are were, you were here today, and uh, I'm also here today, so we are very happy. Today is a very happy occasion for us. We have as our chief guest, His Excellency, 
David Mackinon, the uh, Canadian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka. We are indeed pleased to see you, sir. The, uh, then we also have our keynote speaker and guest of honor, Mr. Paul Thompson, who is the director of the European Federation of Accountants and Auditors for Small and Medium Enterprises. I think this is a very, very important sector for Sri Lanka, huh? although they feel that it is very important for the European sector. I think uh, we in Sri Lanka value your presence today because this is an important area that we are looking at. The Vice President of the CMA Sri Lanka, Mr. Hennayak Bandara, our Chairman of the Examination Committee, Dr. Karyavasam, we also have our long-standing friend, who was our former Vice President, Mr. Bashir Ismail, who's been there really from the inception. Then we also have our senior members, uh, Mr. Ma Manil Jasing, huh, who's the member of our CMA Council, plus also the Vice President of CA Sri Lanka, and I think within a, a few more days, he will take over the mantle as the President of CA Sri Lanka. Then we also have Mr. Sunil Piris, who is our director of the uh, CHFMA program or the hospitality uh, program that we have launched. Our CEO, Mr. Uh, Dimanta, Mr. Narangoda, Damita Narangoda, the uh, director of examinations and the other staff, uh, fellow members, past finalists, ladies and gentlemen. As I said earlier, today is a very, very special day for us, a very, very auspicious day, because this is the CMA Sri Lanka 20th anniversary graduation ceremony. So it was really, uh, I think, a very pleasant occasion for us. And of course, having His Excellency, the ambassador of Canada, really makes uh, quite uh, I think a very, very uh, significant uh, uh, moment for all of us. As you know, the Institute of Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka, or currently as CMA Sri Lanka, I'm indeed happy that we are celebrating the 20th anniversary graduation ceremony today. The significance of this event is recognized by the presence of the Canadian High Commissioner, His Excellency David Mackinon, as it was Canada the founding father who played a major role in setting up CMA Sri Lanka, assisting both in the technical input and financial. So I think uh, we should be very grateful because today we are having a professional body because of our relationships which we have having with Canada. CMA Canada, which is now CPA Canada, provided the technical assistance and the Canadian International Development Agency or CEDA provide the necessary funding for us to travel to Canada and finalize the syllabus and examinations with CMA Canada. On 3rd June 2000, we launched the program and obtained the government recognition 10 years later with the incorporation by an act of parliament in 2009. So really you can see that where we have formed as a society and 10 years later, due to the importance of the management accounting profession, the role played by the Canadian government uh, helped us to be incorporated by an act of parliament with due recognition. With this recognition, as the National Professional Management Accounting Body in Sri Lanka, we obtained the membership of the South Asian Federation of Accountants in 2010, and thereafter the membership of the International Federation of Accountants, the global organization for the accounting profession, and later the Confederation of Asian and Pacific Accountants. This, I think, is of special significance for you because today we are all looking at maybe foreign institutions coming to Sri Lanka. But here you can see that after 1948, we are one of the few institutions that have been set up locally and obtained global recognition. So the accounting profession has done it, not only the our, of course, the CA was already there as a member, 
then CMA, and of course, AAT also. We are proud to state that on this 20th anniversary graduation ceremony, we have 153 fellow members, 105 associates, and 67 past finalists receiving certificates with a total of 1,050 professional management accountants who have passed out from CMA and serving in both the public and private sector. In addition, research has shown that a higher percentage of accountants in the workforce strongly correlates to better outcomes in Transparency International's Global Corruption Perception Index, justifying our incorporation by an act of parliament. So what it says is that if organizations have more accountants, the corruption level will be low, because we are training you in that aspect where you will be able to really prevent corruption in institutions. However, we are disappointed that the cabinet approval granted in 2014 to recruit CMA Sri Lanka management accountants to the government sector has still not been approved, even though it is five years late, as the recruitment would have greatly reduced corruption and inefficiency in the public sector and opportunities provided for the sons of the soil to serve the mother country. I think 2014, if you really see, uh, maybe in 15, a new government came into power. So they really forget what the old government has done. But we are not a political organization. We are a professional body. So it is really unfortunate that this took such a long time. Now it is on the final stages. And I do hope that the, with this appointment, with the election of the new president, that we will see that CMA Sri Lanka accountants would be able to join the government sector and play a major role in this sector in addition to their activities in the private sector. When we look back at the last 20 years, CMA Sri Lanka as the National Professional Management Accounting Body in Sri Lanka were able to enhance management accounting qualifications as per the global standards and emerging trends where for the first time we produce local management accountants. That's the great thing. All this time, a foreign body was producing management accountants, but we as a local body were able to produce local management accountants and also to make it affordable to the people of Sri Lanka. With the introduction of the new syllabus in 2018-2022, in compliance with the Framework for International Education Standards, or the IES, for professional accountants and aspiring professional accountants we have designed a world-class professional management accounting qualification. The objective of the CMA professional program is to produce competent management accountants with a local global outlook required to meet the challenges in organizations, both locally and globally. This has enabled CMA to lay a path to develop next generation fitting management accountants in a digitalized economy. As a member of the Global Organization for the Accountancy Profession, IFAC, and the regional bodies, SAFA and CAPA, we have engaged actively in the development of the profession and have taken initiatives to develop cost accounting standards in Sri Lanka and promoting integrated reporting by the conduct of the CMA Excellence in Integrated Reporting Awards for the last five years. This has resulted in companies preparing a concise integrated report where both financial and non-financial information are taken into account, showing how an organization's strategy, governance, performance, and prospects in the context of its external environment, environment lead to the creation of value in the short, medium, and long term. I think this creation of value is of great importance to all of you, even in your workplace, you need to create value, otherwise before long, your employer will get rid of you. So it's really something that we have to do, and I think we have to really look at it very seriously. It is designed to benefit all stakeholders, including employees, customers, suppliers, business partners, local communities, regulators, and policymakers interested in an organization's ability to create value over time. We are of the opinion that integrated reporting for state corporations, government ministries, 
local bodies such as municipalities, urban councils, and Pradesh Sabhas will enable the public to determine the value created by the use of public funds and make them accountable and responsible to the authorities. I just want to give you a few extracts from recent IFAC publications. IFAC says, we speak out as the voice of the global accountancy profession. Many important voices advocate for the role of accountancy in society. As the global voice for, of the profession, IFAC speaks out in the public interest. Now that's vital importance to all accountants, all professionals, on behalf of the global accounting profession. Accountants are trusted professionals in both the public and private sector. We aim to leverage our reputation to address several critical issues, including regulatory fragmentation, inconsistence in regulation between jurisdictions, cost financial institutions, 5 to 10% of annual revenue, the total cost to the global economy of regulatory fragmentation is more than US dollars 780 billion annually. Fraud and corruption. The cost of fraud and corruption globally is at least dollars 2.6 trillion, or 5% of global gross domestic product. The International Ethics Standards Board for Accountants, facilitated by IFAC, publishes a code of ethics I think all of you are governed by that code of ethics that promotes and embodies the profession's commitment to integrity and transparency. In addition, our research shows that a higher percentage of accountants in the, working, in the workforce strongly correlates to better outcomes in Transparency International's Global Corruption Perception Index, which I mentioned earlier. Then the other important area of sustainability. The deadline for progress towards the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Goals is fast approaching, and many countries are falling behind. The skills of accountants will become increasingly in demand as the Sustainable Development Goals gain traction. Whether to advance climate action, to provide quality education, or to achieve gender equality. Corporate reporting. Professional accountants provide information and analysis that supports decisions about all aspects of an organization's ability to execute its purpose, strategy, and business model, and perform financially and create value. Working in business and public sector, they are well positioned to ensure there is adequate connectivity between financial and non-financial information, and that there are clear links between financial performance and the underlying business across all capitals. There is also another statement where they say, we work to prepare a future-ready accounting profession. Now, that's something that we really have to take care of because especially of the digitalization that is taking place. Profound changes in the business ecosystem require professionals to redefine their roles and contribution to society at large. The accounting profession is not immune to these changes. We play an important role equipping professional accountants and professional accountancy organizations for the future. Preparing the profession for the future requires an emphasis on implementing a comprehensive, integrated approach to international accountancy education that equips current and future professional accountants with the skills, capabilities, and ethical behavior required for an evolving business environment. We believe that accountancy profession needs to show the younger generation that accounting is an exciting and dynamic opportunity. A dual focus on technology and the people development will make finance roles richer and more rewarding. To advance a future-ready profession, a professional accountancy organization with the support of the International Federation of Account Accountants frequently review and refresh their competency frameworks so that the skills and professional development they provide are relevant and high quality. Focus on quality teaching, particularly in emerging topic areas, and deliver training and support in wider skill sets, particularly for mid-career accountants. This may involve building effective partnerships with other providers who can deliver impactful training opportunities. I just mentioned some 
extracts of the International Federation of Accountants because there are, there are very important terms there. I do hope that you would have taken note of it. Further, we have now direct routes to the globalized professional <coughs> accounting qualifications in the UK, Canada, and Australia, and academic pathways, both local and global, to pursue, to pursue graduate and postgraduate MBA and MSc qualifications available for CMA pass finalists and members. It is also now mandatory for all members to comply with the continuing professional development to maintain and develop the professional competency as per the laid down criteria to be eligible to renew their annual membership. Currently, there are member pathways for ACCA UK, CPA Australia, and CPA Canada. The graduation ceremony is the culmination of academic activities of students to become past finalists and on completion of their practical training, obtain them obtain their ACMA membership with senior experiences getting the FCMA designation. Further certificates will be awarded to past finalists and other levels completed students who set the examinations in November 2018 and 29, May 2019. This also includes uh, certified hospitality, finance and management accounting or the CHFMA professional qualification conducted in collaboration with the Sri Lanka Institute of Tourism and Hospitality Management, a specialized course in accounting and finance to meet the demands of the tourism industry. My special thanks to our chief guest, His Excellency David McKinnon, McKinnon, the High Commissioner for Canada in Sri Lanka, and our guest of honor, Mr. Paul Thompson, Director, European Federation of Accountants and Auditors for the SME sector. Their distinguished presence today at the 20th graduation ceremony and their dedicated services are deeply appreciated and have made a major contribution to the success of our graduation ceremony. We are indeed happy to have received continuous support from CPA Canada and the Canadian government and are now discussing with CPA Canada to obtain assistance in the conduct of an online program to train government accountants, which I am confident will greatly benefit the efficiency and performance in the public sector. As per the international standards of IFAC, we have made it mandatory for members to undertake continuing professional development, and this should be mandatory for all government and state corporations so that regular training programs will enable them to keep up with the latest knowledge and developments, increasing efficiency and productivity. Mr. Paul Thompson, the director of EFA, yesterday launched the digital competency maturity model for the small and medium practitioners for SAFA countries. The small and medium practitioners are an important sector in the development of the SME sector by providing accounting and other services for the sustainable development of the SME sector. This will include the digital services or computerizing the accounting services of the SME sector, which will make them more efficient and enable to maintain proper accounts required by many authorities, including the banks to provide loans, working capital, and will be of great service to the banking sector, where they will know that DCMM has brought in modern management techniques to the SME sector, which will also enable them to get loans at lower interest rate. I think that is something very important. Therefore, CMA has now opened up a new avenue of consultancy services to the membership, where they can be actively involved in providing consultancy services to the SME sector in accounting, taxation, project financing, secretarial services, technology services and IT, business development, making SMEs viable and profitable. The DCM project launched by EFA has given us the concept to set up a separate SME division at CMA to support members who are servicing the SME sector. I also wish to thank the chairman and members of the examination committee, direct examinations and our staff, the commissioner general of examinations and his staff, the online testing agency, PSN VUV team, and all those engaged in examination activities and their commitment, dedication, and hard work to make this event a success. The council members of CMA Sri Lanka have always given their full support and cooperation for the success of all our activities, and my grateful thanks to all of them. I should also thank the CEO and staff of CMA who have worked tirelessly in organizing the graduation ceremony and have put in a great effort in making this event a success. My special word of thanks to Ms. Madhumi and the examination staff for organizing this grant event. Also, my thanks to the Education and Training Committee Chairman, 
and members and all CMA approved educational institutions, academic staff and training partners for their dedication and support to turn out professional management accountants who are in much demand in the public and private sector. Finally, I wish to congratulate all those who are receiving fellow and associate membership, all students graduating as past finalists, prize winners, certificate recipients, and welcome them to the management accounting profession and wish them success in their career. Thank you. Thank you too, Professor Lakshman R. Watavala. And also our congratulations, we reckon, for being able to see matters through to fruition in realizing the vision, as we said, 20 years down the road, quite achievement. And now, as has already been explained, we have our keynote speaker. He's an alumnus of the University of Warwick, but his particular role, as was also mentioned, is as director European Federation for Accountants and Auditors for Small and Medium Enterprises. And with him comes a new set of initials, letters. The letters are DCMM. You know what that stands for? Well, you will understand a little bit more after he speaks, I reckon. It stands for Digital Competency Maturity Model for Small and medium scale enterprise. And he has had much to do with setting that up in Sri Lanka, as was mentioned by our previous speaker. So please listen to Mr. Paul Thompson. Well, good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, students of accounting, members of the accountancy profession. Um, it's a great honor, actually, to be here to preside and speak at um, such an important event as a graduation ceremony. It's um, a number of years since I first came to the profession. I graduated um, and subsequently joined, became a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales way back in November 1991. Uh, it's the long distant past. So I've been a member of the profession for a number of years. Um, and it's a real pleasure to be here today. It's a pleasure because I um, able to be at an event where I welcome new people to the profession. And hopefully those new people that come to the profession, your new, the new members, uh, will make this profession stronger and better and more robust and more relevant in, in the coming years. What I want to do, and this is predominantly for those new members, not so much the fellow members, but more for the new members that are joining us today. You're joining our profession. It's a great profession. It's a profession I have belonged to for a, for a good many years. And I'd like to share with you a few words about what that profession looks like today in 2019. Um, how big is that profession? How important is that profession? What work do typical accountants do? And then to look in the crystal ball and imagine what might become of us in the coming years and what you will need to do in order to remain uh, relevant and uh, important in, in your workplace. I think it's important to congratulate you today for joining the profession and for those of you that have been with the profession for the, the, the past five plus years as fellows. But I also want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to always keep learning and improving on what you do. 
and helping take our profession to a higher level than it presently is. It's already at a very high level, but we can go higher and we can become more important. Uh, the mantle is very much in your hands now. Um, I'd like to think I'm one of the older members of the profession. You are the newer members of the profession. So a few words about the profession before I look at the trends that are impacting the profession and what changes you might need to think about going forward. In 2004, I joined the International Federation of Accountants, um, and I was with that organization for 12 years. Uh, the International Federation of Accountants is headquartered in New York City, the United States. Um, it represents the global accountancy profession, and you're part of that profession. It represents a profession comprising 175 or more members and associate professional accountancy organizations, which includes CMA Sri Lanka. That profession works to develop, implement professional standards. It works to promote and speak out on behalf of the profession. It works to help develop the profession. There's also some regional bodies which are relevant in the accountancy sphere. We've already heard mention of the South Asian Federation of Accountants, and not so far away as the Confederation of Asia Pacific Accountants. They are, mem they are regional bodies that CMA Sri Lanka is a member of. And not so far away is also the ASEAN Federation of Accountants. If we look further afield, we see in Africa a Pan-African Federation. If we look to the Americas, we see the Inter-American Association. If we look to Europe, we find the European Federation of Accountants and Auditors and Accountancy Europe. And then we come down to national level. At national level, there are over 170 professional accountancy organizations across the world, of which yours is a very prominent and important one. The largest one is the American Institute of CPA, of Certified Public Accountants, which relatively recently merged with the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. They have 431,000 members working across the world. A little bit closer to home, just across the Straits, India is the home of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. And that is the third largest professional accountancy organization in the world with upwards of 300,000 members. And then we have the firms, the accounting firms. Many of you may not work for those firms because they are the, if you, if you like, the members that work in practice will work for an accounting firm. The largest one is an organization, a firm that I first started working for in London way back in 1988 when I started out my training with the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales. That firm is now called Deloitte. It has a revenue of 43.2 billion US dollars and employs 286,000 staff in over 150 countries. These firms are vast, the big ones, and they're growing quickly. But you know, most accountants don't work in big firms most accountants, most professional accountants, work in small firms or in small business. That's where the majority of them gain their employment. You all are either presently or will likely work in business, in the public sector, in academia. What the International Federation of Accountants likes to call professional accountants in business. You are a professional 
accountant in business. And they work, you work, will work in a variety of organizations of different size, of different scope, of different uh, origin. And collectively, the organizations that you work for, many will be small. And collectively, those small businesses account for over 60% of private sector gross domestic product, or total income, if you will, of the economy. A few words about some other key players on the football pitch, if you like, of accountancy. We have standard setters, we have regulators. We have standard setters, international standard setters, which set standards of financial reporting. There is the International Accounting Standards Board, domiciled in London, that sets IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standard. And we have its public sector equivalent, which is headquartered in Canada, in Toronto, the International Public Sector Accounting Standards Board. And then we have a veritable soup, if you will, of acronyms associated with a range of other professional standard setting bodies. The International Audit and Assurance Standards Board, the International Ethics Standards Board for Accountants, and the International Accounting Education Standards Board. Those three organizations are domiciled in New York City and gain their support, their funding, their staffing from the International Federation of Accountants. Now, a little bit closer to home, here in Asia, we have a body called the Asian Oceanian Standard Setters Group. And they speak up for the profession here in Asia and Oceania to make sure that the global standard setters take account of the unique perspectives and situations of business and society in this part of the world. And then for the regulators. Some of these regulators are not so obvious. The monitoring group is a unique conglomeration of some of the most important regulatory bodies in the world. But until I joined the International Federation of Accountants, I had no idea who they were. They include organizations such as IOSCO, the Baal Committee, the European Commission, and organizations that represent the global insurance bodies. They promote audit quality to foster confidence, public confidence in financial statements. And they have, based in Madrid, an organization called the Public Interest Oversight Board, which oversees some of those standard setting boards that I mentioned previously. And then we have, for the audit community, the International Forum of Independent Audit Regulators, or IFIA. And IFIAR comprises independent audit regulators from 50 plus jurisdictions from across the world. I think that's enough that I want to say about the standard setters and regulators. Um, as you can see, it's quite a, a conglomeration of, of, of acronyms. What I want to share with you are some vital statistics for this profession that you are a member of or are just about to join as a graduate. IFAC a few years ago, four years ago, commissioned two in-depth reports on the profession. One was looking at the numbers, the size, the scale of the profession. The other one was looking at the impact of the profession. The first one, Nexus 1, looked behind the numbers of the profession. It found that professional accountants in total number were growing fast. 16% between the year 2009 and 2013. And in 2013, there were 2.8 million accountants around the world, outpacing growth in overall employment. More than 50%, 55% are like you, working in business, academia, or the public sector what we call the professional accountant in business. The minority, the large minority, 45%, are working in practice. 
for the Deloitte's or the small practices that I mentioned earlier. The other study that was conducted by IFAC was about its global value add. What impact is the profession having on business and society? Well, it was found that the total ecology of the accountancy sector was worth more than half a trillion US dollars, $575 billion, many times the size of the Sri Lankan economy. That is how big the global accountancy profession is that you are joining today. You are joining a community of accountants that numbers in the millions, that collectively has an economy, if you like, that is bigger than your home country and bigger than many other countries around the world. They also have a huge impact on business and society. They have a multiplier effect on employment and other value-added activity. The economic, uh, they, accountants, have been found, as your president just mentioned, to have a very positive impact on the growth of the economy as measured by income per head of person or GDP per capita. And accountants have been found to be associated with improved living standards, the Human Development Index being uh, the index that measures the quality and standard of living of people. In a nutshell, countries that have more accountants typically have higher incomes and better quality of life. So that's the effect that you as accountants are having on the communities, on the society that you are working in and are a part of. Okay, we are now... At a critical point, I think, the profession. There's tectonic shifts in the nature of business and society. There are global trends that are having an enormous impact on everybody, irrespective of whether you're an accountant or a teacher or a lawyer or sweeping the streets or driving buses. These trends include a crisis of trust in many countries in the world, especially in the country where I'm currently living, the United States. There is a crisis of trust in government institutions, in business, in not-for-profit organizations right across the board. There is in many countries in the world a talent war, not a literal war where people are throwing sticks and stones or bombs at each other, but a fight, if you like, between businesses to get, attract, and retain, and develop the right people for their organization. There are huge, fast-paced, pervasive, and fundamental changes in technology. Nothing new at all about technological change. What is new is the pace and intensity of that change. It touches all of us. I came up onto the stage with a little device in my hand. My, I'm sure you all have one, except uh, uh, maybe some family members with, with young children. Their young children perhaps don't have one just yet. This device is, has a more powerful computer than the computer that put man on the moon, and I have it in my pocket. And it can only get more powerful in the future. As it is today, I'm using it for email, and it has my PowerPoint presentation on it, including my notes, should I need them, should I run out of words. Technological change came many centuries ago to the profession with the introduction to double-entry bookkeeping in the 15th century. More recently, we had the calculator and the Excel spreadsheet, which impacted my life when I was training to be an accountant. But now we have data analytics, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, blockchain, which stand to have a much greater impact on our lives, 
on our lives as accountants, as our lives as sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, or whatever we do. We have to embrace that change. We have to reskill ourselves, upskill ourselves, and make sure that we have the right tools. There's also significant changes in business and society. They have different expectations of us as professional accountants. They're not looking anymore for us just to count up the numbers, to be the bean counters. They want us to do more than that. And I'll talk about that in a second. And last but not least, there are other trends, but the, the fifth one, the last one that I wanted to share with you, is the challenge that we all have today, which is to make this place, our home, this planet, our only planet, our only home, sustainable for ourselves and for our children and for our grandchildren. And accountants, again, have a role to play. So the upshot of this, these global trends is that as accountants, we will need a changing skill set, a changing mindset, and different tools. We will need to be more conversant with information and communications technology. We will need to embrace different ways of reporting, not just financial reporting, but reporting on the environment, on governance, on social issues. We'll need to be more than just an accountant. What will need to be? What will the future fit accountant of tomorrow look like? What will they be doing? Potentially a range of things. A co-pilot. Not literally in a plane, but side by side working with business to help them navigate their way forward, to be the navigator, to steer that business to a more prosperous future, to protect its brand, to tell stories, not just expressed in financial numbers, but also expressed in qualitative terms. We'll need to be digital and technology enablers helping clients, helping employers to embrace the new digital technologies. We will be process and control experts, but fundamentally, we will be trusted professional people or advisors. That's what they look, that's what business and society looks to us to do. We are trusted for our competence and our integrity our professionalism, and the value that we can bring. So we need to discover the art of personal reinvention every day. It doesn't stop here. Many of you have thought, wow, I've got through all those examinations and it was incredibly hard work. I was studying long hours. Whoa, I'm at the finish line. You're not at the finish line. You're now at the start line. You will need to continually re reinvigorate, re-engineer, upskill, and keep yourself relevant and on top of changes such as those that I've just mentioned. You'll need to focus on developing and honing personal skills of leadership, of judgment, of ethical conduct. You'll need to use a variety of learning methods, not just the one where you open a big fat book and read it from cover to cover. You'll be using mobile devices. You'll be listening to podcasts and watching videos and learning in different ways, in different places. So to conclude, keep calm, keep on learning, keep on top of your continuing professional learning and development. It starts here, 
It never ends. The challenge is for you to stay on top of changes in business and society and keep yourself relevant for your employer or for your client. You'll need to have flexible skills. You'll need to be a future fit accountant. So in closing, welcome to the profession if you're a new member. Welcome to the family of accountants. For those of you that are fellows, I congratulate you and look forward to a future where all of you are contributing to a better business and society and a stronger profession. Thank you. We thank you too, Paul Thompson. Thanks very much for the encouragement that has been offered those gathered here today, which helps us to move along to the formal address by our chief guest on this occasion of the graduation. As has already been mentioned several times, Canada has had a lot to do with CMA Sri Lanka. You've heard that. And we're particularly privileged to invite now His Excellency David McKinnon, High Commissioner. Thanks. Um, I'm acutely aware that I stand between you and your awards and certificates, so I'll try and keep this uh, um, brief. Um, I didn't bring a PowerPoint though, so you might have to take notes. Um, that fell flat, okay. Uh, Professor Watawala, uh, Paul Thompson, uh, members of the Council on Management of CMA, uh, graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It really is a pleasure for me to be here to mark the 20th anniversary of the CMA Sri Lanka and the 16th graduation ceremony. And I sincerely thank Professor uh, Lakshman for inviting me and for the warm welcome. As you've heard a bit, my presence here is largely because the Institute of Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka was set up in the year 2000 with technical assistance from uh, CMA Canada, which is now the Chartered Professional Accountants of Canada. Uh, this was done with funding provided by, by the Government of Canada. And in my view, it's been a great return on investment. Canada and Sri Lanka have a long history of partnership dating back before independence. The Ar Royal Canadian Air Force uh, provided crucial support for the defense of Ceylon. And an immigrant from Canada, uh, Mary Ratnam, born Mary Irvine, played a leading role in advocating the rights of women in Sri Lanka, including bringing universal suffrage here, in fact, earlier than it came to Canada. Our support for development in Sri Lanka, though, began in earnest in the 1950s. And that development partnership is often thought of, at least by those I meet in my travels here, in terms of hard infrastructure, whether the Maduro Oya Dam, the Katanayaka International Airport, now Bandaranaike International Airport, and the Canadian locomotives that still reliably ply Sri Lanka's railways after more than half a century. And these, these high-profile infrastructure projects stick in the popular imagination and have been of enduring benefit to Sri Lankans, of course. But I actually think our most important collaborations and investments have been in developing the human capital of this extraordinary, diverse, and creative island. Examples include the education of Sri Lankans in Canada under the Colombo Plan and other scholarships. And those students form the nucleus of what is now our extraordinary people-to-people -people links. We developed the Institute of Practical Technology, now the University of Moratua, the original campus. The, we developed the agricultural faculty at the University of Paradenia, what was then the University of Ceylon. And in, since then, it's been extensive work in vocational training uh, support for civil society and for think tanks such as uh, Institute uh, of Policy Studies, all of which continue to pay significant dividends, I think, for Sri Lanka and for our relationship. You also have organizations like the International Development Research Center out of Canada, 
which has funded extensive in-country research in diverse scientific, economic, and public policy areas of importance to Sri Lankans. For me, what makes these investments in collaboration so important is that while they have drawn on Canadian expertise, experience, and support, they're fundamentally about supporting Sri Lankans to understand Sri Lanka's challenges for themselves and to find solutions that make sense in a local context. I think the support for CMA that started 20 years ago is enduring and successful for this reason. A need and the local ambition to address it were identified and Canadian expertise and investment were found to match. 20 years on, long after the formal Canadian support ended, or that initial support ended, the CMA in Sri Lanka is thriving. This suggests that the original investment was on the mark. CMA has made great strides, first and foremost by being incorporated through an act of parliament in 2009 and being recognized as a national professional management accounting institution in Sri Lanka. And since its inception, CMA Sri Lanka has made a significant contribution in professional management accountancy in, in, in this country. That has been done by training and developing world standard management accounting professionals who are innovative, socially responsible, knowledgeable, and capable of sustainable value creation. Management accounting involves preparing and providing timely financial and statistical information to business managers so that they can make informed decisions. Maintaining solid professional accounting practices is of course essential for the growth of a business and of the economy. Confidence in accounting practices combined with effective financial regulation, strong corporate governance, and the rule of law are crucial to attracting quality investment in this highly competitive global economy. Management accounting is essential in an increasingly complex business environment. Intellectual capital, human capital, and technological innovation drive the growth and development of business today. Today, companies have to concentrate more on value creation than just valuation. The work of professionals such as yourselves helps the decision-making process of management as they count on their forecast to make critical decisions. While technical skills associated with financial accounting are important, it is also necessary to possess the analytical skills to understand the underlying business, associated with, uh, business principles associated with accounting standards. In this new scenario, management accounting has grown a whole lot more important. As a result, there is a need to keep pace, pace with these global change, changes. The inclusion of new subjects such as corporate governance, ethics, business valuation, and advanced professional communication and life skills, among others, into the course on strategic management accounting, enhance further this coveted professional qualification by widening the knowledge and analytical skills of the professionals in responding appropriately to these new challenges. And this is all relevant in your daily lives and in your professional lives. There's been extensive media attention in Sri Lanka, as elsewhere, to issues related to financial mismanagement. Media and occasionally government reports have exposed both private and public sector institutions that are either running at a loss or facing liquidity issues, often due to lack of transparency, accountability, and mismanagement. Accountability is about being responsible for, to someone for actions one may have taken about being able to explain, clarify, and justify one's decisions. It implies that someone has a right to know and hold an organization to account, and that the organization has a duty to explain and account for its actions. Transparency is about being easy to understand and being open, frank, and honest in all communications, transactions, and operations. Accountability and transparency go hand in hand. To ensure accountability, there is a need for transparency. Transparency does not guarantee accountability, but it does make it possible. Good governance is always in demand, be it in the private sector or the public sector, if a company or a country is to prosper. A country cannot move forward if there is rampant corruption and mismanagement. A business cannot make profits if there, it is not properly managed. Accountability on the part of those who assume positions of management be it in the public, private sector or the public sector, are essential, is essential. 
Accountability is also about learning from one's mistakes, without which continuous improvement and success will be elusive. On the other hand, a lack of transparency and accountability will create a climate that discourages quality investment, foreign and local, that is essential to a country's progress. Changing tax, I'm very happy to note that the majority of your students and staff are women. And although women are the majority of the population in Sri Lanka, and in my experience, possessed of extraordinary talent, their participation in the workforce of this country, particularly at decision-making levels, is considerably below that of most benchmarks. I think CMA will help change this by preparing women management accountants for the future who can assume higher levels of decision-making, including at the C-suite. Right now, Sri Lanka, like other countries, needs management accountants, women and men, of the highest caliber, who are forthright and guided by the highest levels of integrity and professionalism to serve the country in both the private sector as well as in the public sector. The bedrock of professionalism the CMA provides will help position Sri Lanka for future growth. I want to congratulate the new members, past finalists, award winners, and certificate recipients whose hard work is being rewarded today. I am confident you'll contribute to the success of your organizations and to the future of Sri Lanka. I'm pleased that you've been able to benefit from a strong link with Canada developed two decades ago. Let me also take my, this opportunity to extend my best wishes to the Council and Management of CMA, Sri Lanka, for their visionary outlook in, a, in the accounting profession and for organizing a very successful 20th, century, 20th, 20th anniversary, anniversary graduation ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank you too, High Commissioner. Which now, after his presentation, we move to the raison d'etre for our particular evening, namely the presentation of certificates to those that deserve to have them. So on stage, we invite Mr. Paul Thompson, Director, European Federation of Accountants and Auditors, to be accompanied by Dr. Harendra Karyavasam. Mr. Manil Jayasinghe, who is a council member, and also Mr. Kosala Dissa Nayaka, consultant. So may we invite you all to assemble on stage, and we'll be happy to read out the names of the recipients. And uh, you're invited to come up on stage and accept your certificates at the hand of our presenters. And so it is that we have the certificate awarded for the operational level examinations held in November of last year, 2018. And this is a Diploma in Accounting and Business Studies. Saludre Devakuma. Pratab Sadis Kumar. Tushara Pietunga. Chaminda Lakchan. Isadal Muntaj. M. M. Buddini Pereira. Abdul Shakur.
పి ఏడి విష్మి ప్రబుద్ధి ఫాలో బై ఇందుమిని సేనా నాయక అరుణానందం వివేకానందరాజ్ చతురి మధుషాని మధుహంసి సేన రత్న ఇక్బాల్ మొహమ్మద్ ఇల్హాం A. N. A. Veerasingha Hasita Solochana Prasanna Roop Kumar హర్షజిత్ గమాచి అవిష్క ప్రేర హసని రందిక మధువంతి లినగే నిశంసల గుణవర్ధన శరవణ కుమార్ సతూర్షణి Shavindi Vasana Silva Nisan Sala Sandamali Lichmanin Sadurshana కనగరత్నం నివేదహరణి పికే నిపుణి శివంతిక సచింతిక విక్రమసింగ దినేతి మధుమాలి ప్రేసాంక ప్రేర and marita fernando
And now we proceed with the managerial level. The exams held in November again last year, 2018, and the advanced diploma in management accounting and business studies at the managerial level. Nirmali Nanakara. Himanta Dissanayaka. Sivanadiyan Shantipriya. Pavani Hansika. Muhammad Shahir <laughs> Mubarak Muhammad Hasim <laughs> Prabhavi Madushani <laughs> Kaushalya Hebage Aziz Nias Nadim, <laughs> Gayumi Mari Ratnaika, <laughs> Yasit Chandana Walpula, Nipun Dulaj Anand <laughs> Pubudika Vijayavardhana <laughs> Chek Kumar Kayatri <laughs> Dimutu Sewandi Pereira Shalita Lakmal Bandara <laughs> Yasanti Kongahavat <laughs> Muhammad Navit <laughs> Dasuni Amarasinghe Kanapati Dhyalan <laughs> Sanduni Anushika <laughs> Muhammad Muat. And then Fatima Hafsa. <laughs> Malinda Vijayavardhana. <laughs> and Muhammad Tahi. <laughs> so all of those at the managerial level. And now we move to our next which is the strategic level certificate, the strategic level certificate. And these two were exams conducted in November 2018. The strategic professional certificate awarded to S.A. Nilankar Dilshani. <laughs> Dilini Navodhya Telisinga. And Mohammed Ashfaq. <laughs> Sulakshi Ekkanayaka. <laughs> Ar 
Aranjaya Fernando. G.D. Isuru Dinesh. Gayani Pratiba Pereira. Dilhani Kulasekra. Surya Rani Sadagoban. Hafsa Amit. <laughs> Fatima Asyat. <laughs> Udayangani Dissanayaka. <laughs> Sampat Ariratna. Muhammad Arshad Dinusha Sena Ratna Viranga Gayan Bandara Anushika Tilakshi Gamage Niluminda Jaya Surya. At which point we say thank you very much to our presenter, Mr. Paul Thompson, and invite him to resume his seat. And thank you too to Dr. Harendra Karyavasam, as well as um, Manil Jayasingha and Kosala Disanayaka. And next on stage as presenter, we would like to invite our chief guest, the High Commissioner for Canada, His Excellency David McKinnon. And uh, with him will be Professor Lakshman R. Watavala, President, as well as Mr. H.M. Hennayaka Bandar, the Vice President. Dr. Karibasam, too, will be there as would the course director for the Certified Hospitality and Financial Accounting uh, realm, Mr. Sunil Pires. So, is it on here? Okay. so Certified Hospitality, Finance and Management Accountant. This is the certificate level. The exams conducted this year in March. And this certificate awarded to K.M. Suranga Fernando. <laughs> Isuru Udayanga. <laughs> Usama Gauss. Prasad Royal <laughs> Desha Previrabadana <laughs> Opnetti Gihan. Ragit Javardana, <laughs> then we have Pradeep Charles Fernando, <laughs> Salinda Lakshita Ratnayaka, 
This is for the exams conducted in May of 2019, diploma level two, I should have mentioned. And also diploma level two at the CHFMA examinations of May 2019, our next recipient of the certificate is Prasanna Mendes. And we have three prize winners for CHFMA. Three prize winners. At the certificate level, best overall mark achieved by KMS Fernando. <laughs> oh, here's Sunil. We'd like to invite you up here. <laughs> so our prize winner, Alas, is not here, is he? Oh, he is. K. M. S. Fernando, is he here? <laughs> Best overall mark, certificate level. At the diploma level, one best overall mark achieved by M.I.J. Gauss. <laughs> or rather, M.U. Gauss. Well done. Best overall mark, diploma level one. Diploma level two, best overall mark by B.S.P. Mendes. <laughs> so that's our certified hospitality and financial accounting done. We say thank you very much to Mr. Sunil Pires, who's the course director thereof, and he will resume his place, but we continue with an invitation to Mr. DWS Narangoda, CEO, as we move to our next presentation. Uh, these being the finalists, past finalists receiving their certificates, past finalists for exams at the apex level held November 2018. We start off with Chamindana Veera Singha. Chami Sulakshini. Sajani Kumarasurya. Dilani Marian Jayatilaka. <laughs> Harshala Sadhani. <laughs> Niraz Ahmed. Ruani Bhagya Ekanayaka. Dunstan Krishan. Nay Shamla Asan. Bhagya Desanayaka. Chalka Vijayavardhana.
కైలాసపతి జయకాందన్ దనాలి ఫర్నాండో now the apex level examinations held in may 2019 ahmad rikas <laughs> madushani pereira <laughs> fatima ashfa Evani Prince Matthews <laughs> Hasuja Rishan <laughs> Darshini Samantika Akeel Ahmed Isuru Achinta Ekkanayaka Malika Kurumbalapitiya Anthony Christie Rajendra Niluka Dasanayaka Nandaraja Ajanti M. H. Ranil Vasant <laughs> Abdul Latif Mohammed Dumunif <laughs> Chamara Boteju Ishanka Nandasiri <laughs> Prabhudika Madhur Singha <laughs> Nadaraja Premakant And now the strategic level, exams held in November 2018 and uh, strategic professional certificate awarded to Chaturika Kulatilaka. Hansika Ambarasinghe. Kitmini Jayavardhana <laughs> Nilanka Shaminga <laughs> Damayanti, that is Rashika Damayanti and Milan Madhushankar. (laughs) 
And now we have the prize winners. December 2018 examination foundation level, second in order of merit, HNV Prera. <clears throat> Prize for second in order of merit. December 2018 foundation level. First in order of merit, prize to HGMS Gamagay. Gamagay, not pleasant, present. Then March 2018 exams at the foundation level, second in order of merit. And also with Business English, both prizes to MRM Rasan. <clears throat> Foundation level prize for Management Accounting Fundamentals awarded to Fayaz Mohammed. Also in March 2019, foundation level for Business English, K.R. Fernando. Now more prizes, this for the exams of June 2019. At the foundation level, second in order of merit, as well as foundation level financial accounting and finance fundamentals, and foundation level FME, that's fundamentals of management and economics. All awarded to RDL Patirana. There we are. And uh, almost likewise, we have at the foundation level, third in order of merit, prize for quantitative methods for business and business English, one. All three awarded to JMS DK Jayavardhana. Now, some more prizes. September exams, September this year, 2019, at the foundation level, first in order of merit, also the prize for the subject management accounting fundamentals, as well as QMB, that's quantitative methods for business, or awarded to MJF Arham, yes. Then we have at the foundation level, same exam of September, second in order of merit, a prize to HFF Amina. Amna. Or is it Amina? Amna. Vowel not there. That's it, second in order of merit. Next prize. Third in order of merit at the foundation level to uh, NGDN Nishanka. Nishanka.
And the next prize, Foundation Level Business English 1, awarded to S.T. Heshan. That's exam September 2019. And now we go back a bit to November of 2018, the exams there. Then, at the operational level, second in order of merit, operational level, prize for management accounting, operational level, prize for advanced financial and accounting and finance, ANA Veera Singer. Then we have at the managerial level, exams of 2018 November. First in order of merit as well as subject prize for professional communication, DMP Madhushani. November exams of 2018, Apex level, prize for speech craft, awarded to MCS Dharmavardhana. Apex level. November 2018, a Certificate of Merit for Interpretive Case Study, awarded to AAA Nafi. And now we have more prize winners. This is the exam for May, or held in May 2019. Operational level, second in order of merit, PMDA Pereira. <clears throat> Operational level, prize for management accounting, awarded to DD Madhumali. This would be PMDA Pereira, I reckon. That's second in order of merit, operational level. And the subject prize for management accounting on the Mali. May 2019 exam, managerial level, subject prize, professional communication, Awarded to WMPM Vijayavardhana. And now we have at the strategic level a prize awarded by Vice President CMA Sri Lanka. Mr. H. M. Hennayaka Bandara, for the first in order of merit. It will, it will be received by M. A. G. N. Jaya Surya. First in order of merit, strategic level. Yes, 
So that's Mr. N. Nayakabandara himself, Vice President, doing the honors. We have the strategic level second in order of merit awarded to H. D. Senaratna. Strategic level, third in order of merit, awarded to SADS Ari Ratna. <laughs> then, at the apex level, exams of May 2019, apex level, Prize for speech craft by PAD, received by PADK Reshan. And another prize, Apex Level Certificate of Merit for Interpretive Case Study, awarded to ALF Ashfa. Okay, well done. Now we have a call name before, but uh, present. So, first in order of merit at the foundation level, Sandamini Gamage. And second in order of merit at the foundation level in the exam, March 2019, awarded to MRM Rasan. And now we are happy to introduce the associate members of CMA Sri Lanka. Sadasivam Pradeepan. Z.D. Mohammed Tariq. <laughs> Madhushani Jaya Singha. <laughs> Mohammed Hisham Deen. Associate Member Kushani Aparekka. <laughs> Trushyanti Sriskandaraja. <laughs> Associate Member Telini Aishani Pereira. Associate Member Madurangika Virapura. Applause 
มูฮัมหมัดมาฮูดูตุชาร์นวันปรียงกระชมาลฟลันด์ปุลเล่ที่ทิรุวัตชีวันเคมส์มูฮัมหมัดริซวานนิลักษ์เชิดปฏิบัติรัตน์เสกระพระบุตรกาวาราปิติผู้ป่าลับเลยเวโนดินีอารณกิริวิสวนาดันพัสนชาตุรังกาพิทยากุลฮันสันีเพรระอานันต์เดวะเพรียบอัศวชัยเบมบัสุบาชนีเพรนโดฮิรุนีสวังกีวิกรมาราชีมหสรังกนWe continue with associate members, m o h a m m e d Azam, s a d a s i v a m s a d i v a r a Raja, Priyanka Kulatunga. นิลูชีเพมมาวาดูดุชันต์รูปสิงห์รูปันติกาเทลกัสิรีดินุชาดายส์เอลวีส์วันเอกเซกระรุชดีมูฮัมหมัดอุตสาหะเชื่อมโยงมหามัดฟาซมิลเ
Subramaniam Hishalani. Prasandika Piyaratna. Kanchana Dilrukshi. Sevandi Chaturani. Nilika Abe Surya. Razak Mohammed Fahad. Mahendra Banyarachi. Iresha Vayomi Prera. M.K. Susanta. B.W. Imalka Sanjeevani. Ruchira Niroshana. Takshila Jai Singha. Zaruk Rizam. Associate Member Mary Nirosha Sagayam. More associate members, Sanjeeva Adas Surya. Sadiq Mohammed Mustaq. Samitani Jai Surya. Srishila Tamimutu. Shalintika Vijay Tunga. Ramachandran Jayapriya. P.L. Darshi Sanjeevani. Shanya Dharmavadana. Mohammed Roshan Ashraf. Harit Shaman Subhasinga. Viraj Bharadhan Pereira. Or Bharadhan Pereira. Uday Rukmal Vijay Kohn.
Lakmini De Silva. Nilusha Nuani Kure. Diana Gloria Yogaraja. Mohammed Altaf. Madhushanka Desanayaka. Nishant Nicholas. Nilanjani Premadasa. Chaminda Gunaratna. Nilosha Priyangi Panditaratna. Jairwani Pires. Harshana Chaturanga. Shamini Pradarshani Pereira. Isan Ahmed. Gayanti Piyumika. So we've just concluded the associate members being recognized. Now fellows, fellows of the Institute of Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka. Milangani Senaratna. Isuru Kalhara. Iraj Munasinga. Jagadishwaran Muturaja. Dhanika De Silva. Dhanika De Silva. Arar Saman Kitsiri. Anuradha Hettiheva. M.M. M. Mohammed Faris. Vijita Jayasari. Sriani Varnage. Hiranda Navagamua. Indunil Vimalaratna.
Indrika Kumari Galhena. Rajanadan Kanandiran. M.M. Chandima Jaisuriya. Ramesha Mekalani de Silva. Sanjay Damit Jayasurya. D. Keith Hassan. M. M. Mohammed Rizli. Tuan Kamun Kutilan. Sajiva Kumara Rodrigo. Sadimurti Mayuran. Sumal Dinesh Fernando. Dilantaran Priya Fernando. Manori Ranasinghe. Fellow member Nimal Kularatna. Velapan Pradarshani. Madara Gunavardana. I beg your pardon. Madura Gunavardana. Buddhika Gunasekara. Sasalanka Kamalaratna. Johan Asanka Prera. W. H. Channa Jagat. Amali Nisansala. Manoj Kumara Maduranga. Densi Roshan Ratnayaka. Kanaka Sundaram Sinduja. Prasanga Mano Cherivardana. Tosita Dammika Rodrigo. Murganandan Salaya.
Gandhimani Sivanesan. Nalla Ratnam Jeevanandan. Kasun Dilanka Lienage. Pushpalada Subramaniam. Amal Meron Fernando. Fellow member, Denali Onika Manatunga. Rasika Amil Prashanta. Taranga Gunatelaka. Samantha Upananda. Seneca Bandara Ranavira. Managa Asela Indica. Samind Pereira. Samira Kakulendra. Emin Muhammad Irshad. Indika Dinesh. W.G. Kitsiri Ratnayaka. Mervyn Augustus Francis. Emmanuel Devagumaran. Tilanka Ukuwela Tiruvanakarasu Ramishagaran Harshakasena Vira. Kushan in the Kabetta singer Mohanda Suresh Kumar Melroy Galbada Rachi. Muhammad Zudi Hussein. Bandula Mahind Amrasinghe. Lasanta Rangana Silva.
Eranda Bandara Ranatunga. NM Hassan Mubarak. And fellow member, Panaya Pushpakumar. Pushpakumar. And now we have a pleasant task, uh, which will be taken over by President Professor Lakshmana Watavala, to hand over a token of appreciation to our chief guest, as well as our keynote speaker. But I guess we start off with His Excellency the High Commissioner, David McKinnon. So herein, we have a citation which Professor Watavala requests that I read. To the Chief Guest, as a token of appreciation to His Excellency David McKinnon, Canadian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka, to symbolize the historic occasion on the celebration of 20 years of setting up of CMA Sri Lanka in 1999 with the technical assistance of CMA Canada, now CPA Canada, and financial support of the Canadian International Development Agency, known as CEDA. That's it. Date, 10th December. <laughs> and now to... Mr. Paul Thompson. Oh, more than just the plug. <laughs> to our keynote speaker, Paul Thompson. Thank you very much. We'll invite everyone to resume their seats now. Thank you for having presided over the distribution and presentation of certificates, as well as the prizes, importantly, and recognizing associates as well as fellows of CMA Sri Lanka. We have a word now on behalf of the student body. It's PADH Rishan who has been inducted to fulfill that role. Please, Rishan. The Excellency Canadian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka, David McKinnon, Chief Guest of uh, the Graduation Ceremony, Mr. Paul Thompson, Keynote Speaker, Professor Lakshman R. Vatavala, Founder President of CMA Sri Lanka, other council, council members, CMA members, CMA students, invitees, and my dear ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank CMA for giving me this vital opportunity to address the gathering on a 20th anniversary graduation ceremony. So I th today I thought of sharing my life story with CMA uh, without taking much of your time. So it all started in 2016. Um, to be honest, after I did my A-levels, I didn't have any idea about the higher education. So I got to know about CMA Sri Lanka in 2016 from a leaflet what I found on the road in front of an uh, education institute. And 
as a result, I sat for my very first examination. That was the foundation level exams in 2016. And uh, guess what? I was awarded as the uh, All Island Merit First Award, uh, achieving the highest score for the overall level, along with the prize award for the business mathematics and statistics subject. And then I got to know that uh, it, apart from the education, working experience is also a must. So I joined with a multinational banking corporation uh, because working experience is essential for you to become a professionally qualified management accountant. However, next I sat for my operation level exams. Unfortunately, I failed in two subjects, including a normal subject and a core subject, uh, where the normal subject I was I failed in with a marginal failure, while the core subject I failed in an utter failure. That means a e-fail. However, this didn't drop me down. Rather, it motivated me and encouraged me to sit for my uh, remaining exams as well. So uh, gradually, I could finish my operation level, managerial level exams as well. And then when it came to the strategic level, it was a tough decision for me to either focus only on two subjects or to do all the four subjects together. Because as per my point of view, strategic level is the hardest level, uh, co even compared with the case study. However, fortunately, and as I determined, I was able to finish the strategic level, all the four subjects at a stretch in one sitting, as well as the apex level and the case study level. And my dear friends, today I was able to finish all the CMA program within three years along with uh, the working experience, almost three years of working experience. However, my dear friends, uh, getting the awards, passing our exams is just a part of CMA. It's all what we get at the end of the day. But there are many, many opportunities what CMA gives us. I would like to give, uh, give a brief explanation on that as well. CMA basically provides us like facilities uh, they facilitate conferences, give us opportunities to go for conferences, not only locally, but also internationally. And most importantly, uh, CMA gives the facility for us to uh, participate in international, co international competitions as well. So I would like to share a small experience about the opportunity that I got through uh, this foreign contest. So it was the SAFA 2019 quiz and a quiz and speech com competition held in India, Pune, uh, organized by the South Asian Federation of Accountants. So before sending us to, the, to India, uh, CMA provided us facilities or trainings for more than three months and, and gave all the facilities and sponsors. And, final, and also uh, through, through many internal competitions, CMA selected uh, two of us. So fortunately, I was among the two, and my friend Munifa as well. So the best part was that once we went to India, uh, we could we could be able to beat all of them. That means beat the Indians, the Bangladeshians, the Nepalians, and most interestingly, the chartered accountants of Sri Lanka as well by five points. So um, I would like to say that, and I'm proud to say that today, CMA stands in a position where we can even compete the chartered accountants of Sri Lanka. And not only the chartered accountants, we can still compete the national and international level as well. So apart from that, uh, there are still, there are many things that I got from CMA. So that includes leadership qualities, communication skills, and public speaking skills. So mainly from two things, I got those skills. The first thing is due to the speech craft program, but uh, the Toastmaster International Club is uh, uh, conducted under the Toastmaster International Club. And I'm uh, very much thankful, Professor, for introducing this uh, program to CMA and making it mandatory so that we definitely have to follow it to become a past finalist. And also, the other reason why I got these skills is uh, through the CMA Students Guild. So basically, the CMA Students Guild is uh, the official student society appointed uh, by the CMA Institute in 2012, and um, thank you very much, CMA, for appointing me as the fourth president of uh, the CMA Students Guild. So through this uh, CMA Students Guild, I actually learned a lot. I got confidence in public speaking, in communication skills, to uh, leadership qualities, to management skills, and 
connections and networking with many corporates from lower to the top level management as well. And, and also uh, innovation skills. To be honest, I would like to say that uh, CMA Students Guild is launching its very first uh, website, the official website in January. And also we have planned to, uh, to launch a newsletter which we will be launching every single month to give all of you an additional uh, education, additional value apart from what you are learning. So, apart from those as well, what I got, and today I am able to straight away jump into uh, the final year of a business graduate, Bachelor of Business Administration degree in UK. Uh, the reason that I could straight away jump is because of the CMA qualification. So CMA qualification is obviously valid not only here, or across the globe. So, um, I hope, my dear friends, that you all would never think that CMA provides um, um, such a uh, broader context of facilities apart from the exams what we sit and face. So, uh, my dear friends, uh, to wind up my, my speech, I would like to briefly tell me, tell that I am so proud to be, uh, I'm so proud that I am 23 years of, year, of age and I was able to complete CMA within Three, three years, along with almost three years of working experience, and also sitting for the final semester of uh, the final year of my bachelor's degree, and currently working as a financial, a junior financial analyst of, uh, the com of, a comp of a private limited company. And that is, only, that is only because of CMA qualification, because that only boosted up all my qualifications, including the working experience. So finally, I would like to thank everybody and uh, especially CMA for giving me all these opportunities and most importantly my parents, my uh, father mostly for helping me out uh, and sacrificing a lot in his life and my mother as well. And um, I would like to tell all of you, my dear friends, not only do your education, uh, not only study, not only work, get out of the box and do a lot extracurricular activities, build your networks. At the same time, I would like to uh, wish CMA uh, CMA to to be one of the most one of the leading professional bodies not only not only locally but internationally and uh, thank you very much all of you for this opportunity thank you noble words from Reshan thanks the final word of thanks and the official uh, concluding remarks will be by Vice President, Mr. H. M. Hennayaka Pandara. Our chief guest, keynote speaker, President, members of the council, Chief Executive Officer, distinguished invitees, parents, members, past finalists, certificate recipients of CHFMA program. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to propose this uh, vote of thanks after an incredible graduation and certificate awarding ceremony. On behalf of CMA, First of all, I would like to thank our chief guest, His Excellency David McKinnon, Canadian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka, for so graciously consenting to be the chief guest on this important event. We are personally aware that His Excellency had to make many sacrifices to be with us this afternoon. Thank you, sir, for honoring us with your presence. It is very significant to have with us our keynote speaker, Mr. Paul Thompson, Director, European Federation for Accountants and Auditors for SMEs. We thank you for readily accepting our invitation and including our award ceremony in your busy itinerary to address us. Your presence here is a great encouragement to our institute 
and look forward to your continued support in the future as well. My special thanks to our president, Prof. Lakshman R. Vatavala, for giving the leadership, guidance, and encouraging the staff of CMA to carry out the task entrusted to them and members of the council for their valuable contribution. Ladies and gentlemen, our direct examination, young, energetic, and dedicated team headed by Chief Executive Officer had a tedious task. I thank all of them for their unparalleled contribution towards making this graduation and certificate award in ceremony a success. I would like to take this opportunity to thank media for creating an awareness among stakeholders and others who have provided logistical support. Finally, let me thank all our distinguished invitees, parents, fellow members, for honoring our invitation. Your valued persons has no doubt contributed largely to the success of today's graduation and certificate award ceremony. I wish all certificate recipients a fulfilling career. Thank you all. And with that, the formality of our graduation, our celebratory graduation, concludes. But a couple of announcements are appropriate. As you must be aware by now, it's raining the proverbial cats and dogs and a few other animals as well. So the photograph, the group photograph will now not be a group photograph, but will be a section photograph. All those of you who are adorned with cloaks must remain. And then in units or groups or segments, our photographer will conduct you to the stage, assemble you, and then the photographs will be taken. And by hook or by crook, more, mainly by crook and Photoshop, you'll all be in one group. But then that's his business, not yours. Your business is to remain under his direction, inside here. Okay. Then um, we must remain also, everyone, until those in the front row, that's our distinguished company here, of our chief guest, our guest of honor, and our keynote speaker and council members, and uh, our course director will file out, and they will move across to the lavender, which is the room opposite, and a group photograph of them will be taken there. And uh, those others who are not in the photograph and who have the appropriate slip of paper, you can partake of refreshments. Those in the photographs also can have your refreshments after the photograph. So don't run out now. Those in the cloaks, remain. Photograph will be taken and then you can go out. But let's allow those of our distinguished guests and our Officers of CMA Sri Lanka to move on out. There's also the studio facility. If you have missed out taking your individual pictures, that also can be done on the other side. There's a studio facility there. If you've not had that opportunity. Some have already done that. Those that have not, Okay, we're ready for the pictures. Here's our gentleman photographer. He will tell you what to do. And remember, always smile.